Okay, welcome back to Lean Brothers. Today, I want to talk about spoil boards, what they are, how they function, um, and why we have them. So when I bought our first CNC, which was a Laguna, I had no idea how parts were even sucked down onto the table. And I bought the machine knowing, hey, I know these work, but I'd never really watched one work. I'd never known how pieces stick to them, so they stay down. Well, they use a spoil board. So on this machine, when you look under the spoil board, you can see there's a matrix table, a grid. And there's a gasket on this grid. And we put a, what we call a spoil board on it. So we use an MDF. It's a fairly inexpensive MDF, um, not the LDF, um, just an inexpensive standard MDF. And what happens is, is there's two, you can see these two big uh, Bush vacuum pumps. They're connected into this matrix table and then they suck from down below. They're super strong. And believe it or not, the air sucks right through this MDF and will hold parts to them. And obviously the bigger the sheet, the more the spoil board's covered, the better it sucks down. And the reason we do this is because when we're doing cuts and doing through cuts, especially on a nested base or a flat table CNC, we have to have something that is a sacrificial surface. So you can see in this spoil board, you can see marks and drill holes, things like that. So when the board goes on, it sucks down and the bits go into the table just a little bit. And then a couple times a day, we shave this board off, make it smooth again, so that parts will stick down better and not have the gaps of the bits going down into it. So that's what a spoil board is. It helps hold your piece. So when you put a piece on, it'll suck right down and it'll hold the piece to the, to the board and then the router can come over and cut it. So you don't have to do special jigs. You know, there's pod and rail machines that actually have little suction pods that you can stick your pieces on and it'll suck those but that's not a whole sheet. This cuts entire sheets. So that's what a spoil board is. Um, we cut into our spoil board. These home egg machines are really accurate. So we only cut into our spoil board. Um, it's 0 0.05 millimeters down into the spoil board. So it's next to nothing, but with good tooling and good accurate machines, that makes our spoil boards last quite a while. Um, a lot of times we go weeks. Um, on a spoil board and we don't have to replace it. Once they get thin, about 10 millimeters is how thin we go. And then we take them off, put a new spoil board on. And when you put a spoil board on, we put a new one on and we cut the surface down about a millimeter. And then we flip the whole sheet over and cut that surface a millimeter to get, to kind of expose the pores, if you will, of that wood. So it sucks good and then we just start running. We used to edge bend the side. People talk about painting their spoil boards, but with these, ever since we got these, the Bush vacuums, we've had no real suction loss. And so we don't spend the time to do that anymore because we don't really lose parts on them. So anyway, there's lots of questions. I wish I knew the weight of this board. There's a lot of questions, you know, around asking what weight of spoil board that you should use. This is a Ranger board is the brand. Um, we've had really good luck with it. Um, but if you have any questions about a spoil board, what they are, how they work, let us know. So you said that you will run them to about 10 millimeters. What size do you start with? Like, they start at 19 millimeters. And is that after you? No, 19 millimeters is three quarters. So we just buy three quarter sheets. And so they're 17 to 17 and a half after we prep them out and get them ready. And you said they last one to two weeks, but that is dependent on how busy your shop is. So how many boards would you guesstimate that you get to cut out of a spoil board? I wish I knew the exact stats. I'd have to ask the guys. Um, they're really only replacing them every three to four weeks. And these machines average, they cut 50 sheets a day. Um, so yeah, we're, we're cutting, uh, and they may even be a little more than a month, but they, they probably last to uh, 500 sheets, I'm guessing, of cut. And then you mentioned other ways to hold down. Like, do you have a spoil board on your five axis? We do, yep. All of our machines are all flat table machines. Do you have any of the pod sucker things that you talked about? I do. Yeah, we do have some vacuum pods that actually we can put on the matrix table or on the spoil board. 
we can show you those in a second. This is a vacuum cup. These vacuum cups are actually designed uh, for either like countertops on stone CNCs or to put on spoil boards. So you put that on, hold your material up. So a pod and rail machines don't have spoil boards. They just have places that you can put the vacuum cups and move them around to be able to suck your piece down. This kind of gives you the best of both worlds. They get a little dusty sitting here, but we have some different sizes that we can put on and we can set work, piece on them, work pieces on them and suck them down. Why, why would you use this? So if you want to do like edge work, especially, or a tool, so on the five axis specifically, you know, if we, let's say we had this piece right here and we wanted to cut the edge, do something on the edge, then this would suck down and our, our spindle can come over sideways and do some routing in the side, you know, things like that. Or like we've sanded the edges before and we obviously can't just sand right to the spoil board. We got to get down so the orbital can come over and it can actually go around and sand that. So lots of different applications that you can do if you have them, have them up a little bit. So like in this case, how do you square it off then? Like how do you make sure things are aligned properly? I'll show you. So once you have a program loaded, then these pins come up. So you use the pins to align them. And that's how pod and rail machines are. They have pins that hold. And then as soon as you suck it down, then, oh, I have the vacuums turned off so the noise isn't there. So they're not, they're not going down. But it'll suck down, the pins drop, and then you're able to route around the edges and stuff. So, so with this spoil board having holes for the pins, how do you cut the holes? We actually, we actually put a sheet on this machine and cut the sheet out and put the holes in it. And then we take the old one off and put the new one on. So you do that before you replace the spoil board? Yep. If you have any questions about, you know, any of these things about CNC spoil boards, let us know in the comments and we'll try and do a short on it. Have a good one. See you next time.